Hey, this is Pete from 21st Century Prepper. In this week's podcast, we're going to be talking about OPSEC, Operational Security. There seems to be some issues out there for some people where they deal with um, how much information they want to give out on the Internet, like who they are, what they have, and uh, how much other people should give out and if you should even be on social media. So tonight it's myself and Skip. Good evening all. We're going to talk about OPSEC for a little bit. I've seen a couple posts lately, and I've been seeing them for years now, about, oh, let's say radio. Let's say someone's a ham radio operator. You know, it's everybody's go get your license and whatnot. And there's other people sitting off to the side screaming, don't do that because they'll track you. And I've always asked, I'm a little bit of a smart ass at times, Who's going to track you? Why are they tracking you? And why do you think you're that important that someone's going to track you? I don't understand. Now, this is a total, like, shit hits the fan, fantasy scenario that we're talking about. I don't get why people think someone who's in the same dire straits as you are, possibly, is going to take the time and the effort to track someone down on the radio. I mean, first thing, they have to be able to hear you. They have to be within a certain distance of you. They have to be on the radio at the time to hear you talk and then be able to track you down that way. And if you're, you know anything about security, you don't sit there and gab. Say your messages, you do it quickly, you do it in possibly a code or, you know, something. At least I'd hope people are taking this seriously and are concerned about that kind of stuff would do it that way. It may sound like I'm a jackass <laughs> about it, but I don't know why people think they're that important that you know, someone, whether it be the government or some other group, is going to be out there trying to find them while listening to the radio. I don't get it. Skip, you're, you're the radio guy. <laughs> what, do you, what do you take from that kind of thing? Uh, you know, as long as you use common sense and you're not keyed up for extended periods of time and it, quite honestly giving out too much information over the radio, It'd be hard for somebody to really track you down. And when I say extended period of time, I mean, you key up, you say what you have to say, 10 seconds off the key. Then you wait in a, you know, a designated amount of time. You talk to your other person. You say, I'll be back in 10 minutes. You, you can triangulate somebody pretty easily by doing nothing more than driving in a circle in a parking lot. And that'll give you the direction that they're in. However, if you don't give them a long key to be able to do that, and it's very hard to say, okay, you're here, you're there. And I mean, you can use a beam antenna, which is a directional antenna, and you can get the general direction. But again, you don't key up for really long periods of time. That's the, the biggest thing. You don't sit there and talk about why your neighbor's dog's barking and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just saw a James Cagney movie the other day where they, <laughs> they're ch- he was a bad guy, but they were chasing him. They had radio cars. You know, and there there was three of them. It was the classic way you, I would think of it, because I'm not a radio guy, and you filled me in on the how easy it is to track if they're keyed up long enough. But again, they have to be listening when you're listening. They have to be on the same frequency and the same frequency. Yeah, they have to be on the right frequency. They have to be listening. They're expending manpower to do what? It's, It's my things like what well i'll tell I don't you don't think it's that big a deal well i'll tell you a quick story uh there was a gentleman and i'll use that term loosely <clears throat> who came on to our frequency and was keying up and acting a part of a fool quite often and a few of us with directional antennas were able to triangulate that individual's whereabouts pretty easily but we were using three stations one 60 miles north, 160 miles to the east and me, east and me down here to the south. And where he screwed up was, is he was doing it for long periods of time where he was keying up the mic, basically putting something on it and just playing music all the time. So it, it didn't take long for us to figure that out. Now, if he'd have been smart about it, we didn't ever got him, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah. And you, and, and you guys were using the same, he was using the same channel yes. probably yeah. over and over again. Yeah. Or yeah. He, he was, he, he he was so predictable because he'd come in there every night at seven o'clock and from seven till nine, he'd just key up the microphone and, you know, we were smart enough to get on another frequency and communicate about it. And just, we were able to track him down within 
an eighth mile of his home. And once we got that close, uh, we, you know, you can very easily find that. Yeah. 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 Just look for the big antenna in his backyard. Yeah. The big, <laughs> well, I mean, you turn the RF gain down on your radio and you drive around for a little bit and where the signal gets stronger, uh, you know, and you start zeroing in on it, but it, you just don't key up for long periods of time. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's uh, how many factors is that? We have to be on the same frequency. You have to be on at the same time. Right. You have to be within a certain amount of distance. You have to be gabbing for long periods of time. I mean, that's four four factors that factor in on just the radio itself. And then they still have to be able to find you, whether it's the fantasy live in the woods thing that people are going for. Um, <laughs> not for me, buddy. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'd be living on the beach. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we're over there by the pool. The in guy on the radio is over there by the pool, on, on, in the pool. Um, <laughs> another another OPSEC thing is social media. A lot of people come on and they show their bob or they show their inch bag or they show their weapons or their EDC. And for me, that was a that was something I had to contemplate that myself when I started the page was how much of this information do I want to give out there? You're on social media and people are worried that, you know, and we have the roll call post. I haven't seen it for quite a while, but, uh, and people are like Texas and people are like freaking out that someone said that they lived in Texas. <laughs> Big well, state in a damn country. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to do is click on their name and go to their page and you can, even if they don't have the friends listing and whatever, you can check ins. Yeah. Geotags. Check in check ins at your favorite restaurants and they went to see the kids at the high school with the Christmas choirs. And then there's these other deals where you can go and pay whatever fifty bucks to look up people on the internet all you want. The opsec of just being on social media, I think if you're concerned about it, you've already failed because you're on social media. Unless you're totally using a, a false account. And even then, people that know what they're doing can still track you down. And uh, if you're that worried, just don't be on the internet. I guess and, I'm half in the middle there because I do keep a, I try to keep an eye on my social media footprint more for work than anything. You know, on my page, you never see me post pictures of firearms or much in the way of political comments or anything like that. Stuff that could come back to bite you eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you, you can limit your social media pr footprint, but like you said, if somebody wants to find you, they're going to find you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the OPSEC of being on social media and showing your bug out bag, to me, I'd, ooh, Phil's got whatever. I don't care what <laughs> Phil's got. I'm not going to go to Phil's house to take his whatever because it's just ridiculous uh, to me. I mean, oh, the, the world falls apart, whatever, the fantasy, whatever you want to do. And I know there's a, a member that lives yeah, 70 yeah. miles away. I'm going to make a journey 70 miles after she has hit the fan to go take, to try to take Phil's <laughs> freeze-dried peas. <laughs> I, you know, that's part of, that's why I'm prepping and so I don't have to do that because... For one thing, there's two thousand houses between me and Phil. If I, yeah, and why would it, I? Yeah. I want to go over to here where this guy is a prepper who supposedly has some weapons, and whatever, and maybe a few friends. I'm going to go try to take his stuff while I walk by Matilda's house, where Matilda, you know, isn't there crochets. anymore? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe died <laughs> two days ago. I, you know, or three weeks ago. I understand where people are concerned about it. It's like, ooh, be quiet, be careful. There's stuff I, there's stuff I don't put on there. I, I run the page and I'm trying to promote it to people and educate people. There's stuff I don't put on the page. Things I have, things I own, things that I've done, things that I plan on doing. I have bug out locations, but I, yeah, I've only shared a couple of locations with a few people. I have like eight bug out locations pre-planned places to go i'm not going to give that out to people you know because that's part of that you do have to have a little bit of 
some common sense, I suppose. The prep tip of the week, the gold and silver. Have I bought gold and silver? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, do I have it on me? No. <laughs> if I did, no, I don't have it on me. <laughs> um, so someone going to show up for what? My 10 grams of gold? That I, If I had 10 grams of gold or three ounces of silver? I mean, three ounces of silver is $80 or whatever it is, if, it's, if that. There's common sense in that, too, where it's like, don't give out everything, but you're on social media, so if people want to find you, they're going to find you. No matter, even if you're not on social media, if someone just gets your name, they can find you. I mean, it's not that hard. These are just off of posts and concerns and things that I've seen people discuss over the last few years, where it's it's you kind of have to sit back and go, okay, I understand where you're going with this, but you have to think, why would people do this? You know, it's like, I've seen your picture of your radios and all that, right? I'm not going to travel halfway across the country <laughs> to take your radios. And I know you have some freeze-dried food. Yeah, I'm not going to travel to the East Coast to take your radios and your freeze-dried strawberries. It's just, And I don't think guys 20 miles from you are going <laughs> to come no. to take your radios and your freeze-dried strawberries. No, no. Uh... How much? How much energy and whatever you would you have to expend just to, to go to those go twenty there. miles yeah, for an, uh, for an unknown? The same thing too. Oh, I didn't even touch. The government's going to come take our stuff. Oh God, the FEMA we've, thing. We've, we've all oh. we've all seen that. Yes. The go- the government knows all preppers, and they're going to come and take all of our stuff. Yeah. They're going to drive past that Walmart distribution center, and the seventeen WalMarts between here and there. And all the grocery stores, and all the convenience stores, and all the farms, and all the whatever to come and take my eight cans of pork and beans, right? Yeah, and sixty-two cans of corn, and my you know twenty cans of dinty more beef stew. <laughs> no, they're not. I mean, for one thing, it's going to feed one platoon for about <laughs> two days. So why would they come all the way here? And bypass, I live in a town of 3,500 people. They're going to come and skip everybody else and come to my house because I'm a prepper. You're a prepper. Right? I don't think so. Yeah. A little common sense. It's, it's just it just needed. <laughs> no one's coming for your food. No one's coming for your radio. We're going to track you by your radio because we're just people. We're just – unless you're trying to overthrow the government, which – if you're trying to overthrow the government, please get off my page. Yeah, you don't need go that away kind now. Of crap. Yeah, go away now. So anybody trying to overthrow the government, please leave. Thank you. <laughs> we just lost fifteen thousand members, but that's okay. No, I'm, that's okay. <laughs> and I'm perfectly fine with that. If eight thousand members are trying to overthrow the government, <laughs> vote them out of office and vote someone else in. Okay, that's how you overthrow the government in this country. OPSEC is 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 important, but we don't have to take it as serious, I think, as we as we freak out about sometimes. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Bags. That's another one. You gotta carry a bag that's in the screen you know. Yeah, gray man. Yeah. Gray man. Gray man's what? <laughs> if you wear camouflage gray man is different between blue here jeans, and there. Yeah. Camouflage blue jeans and work boots around here, you're pretty much set. You know, <laughs> it's, it's everyday uh, yeah. attire. Uh, if I don't wear camo here, I feel out of place. Uh, yes, you know? uh, I feel you. Uh, I, I, I was just on vacation. I was at Universal Studios in Orlando, and you've been there. Yep. At least one person out of a party has got a backpack. Yep. At least one. There happened to be, I don't know if it was some like national cheer team thing going on last week, but there were cheer teams there, so it was like 20 little middle school girls. And they all had the same backpack. They all had pink backpacks with their school name on it or their organization name on it. I saw every backpack make and model no available. God, yeah, right. You know, there was school backpacks. There was cloth backpacks. Uh, there was nice hiking backpack. You know, small ones, like a day pack type size. I didn't see, you know, Full big, huge gear. packs because yeah. it's 85 degrees and you're climbing in and out of crap and the lockers are only so big. I saw tactical backpacks with 
molly straps on them and and people are so freaked out because make sure you have the right backpack the right backpack is the backpack that works for you yep it's it's <laughs> it's who cares if it gets to that bad of a point people are going to care that you have something whether it's in a backpack or a grocery sack they're not going to care if you have an elmo backpack or a tactical backpack <laughs> with shit strapped all over it. Oh. Some days I would just want to beat my head against my desk when I read some of these people, some people's concerns. Battle. I, I'm, I'm sure you know. My mother and my aunts used to say, "Bless their heart," and then so well. I'm sure they're meaning well, but people just, I kind of just don't think through what they're saying as they're typing it because. You're on a keyboard and who cares? You know, you're sitting in yeah. wherever, <laughs> Athens, Georgia, anonymous, somewhat, and you're concerned about this, and that's okay. But think it through before you. You need a plain backpack. Well, what's a what's plain in your area? You live in Montana. What's what's normal in your area if you live in Montana? It's anything and everything. But anyway, so I think that pretty much covers OPSEC for right now. Do you got anything else, Skip? No, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm still stuck on that though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's today's podcast, uh, 21st Century Prepper, on Facebook and on the World Wide Web at 21stCenturyPrepper.net. Someday the dot com is going to work. I swear it's going to work. So, but right now, 21st century prepper.net. Thanks. It's